Alrighty then, so we're going to have a wee talk about Call of Cthulhu's The Darkness Beneath the Hill. Uh, I'm joined here with uh, one of the regular players and GM Orf. He was a beginner GM uh, when he ran this for me. Um, you want to say hello? Hello, what's up? <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Okay, so you ran this for the first time as a beginner GM and this was your first module or scenario to play, right? Yep, that's correct. So, it was uh, pretty interesting. Okay, yeah, I mean, you ran it once before I played it with you as well, I think. So you've run it twice, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, I've run about uh, two and a half times by the time we played it together. Oh, I right, had yeah. one yeah, one session that never really concluded. So, Oh, excellent. So you know this module pretty well then, uh, and you've went over the the layout I've got in front of you as well, uh, just to confirm a few things. I've forgotten to change the things you wanted, but never mind, we'll, we'll add that later. Um, okay, so what's your first initial impressions of the, the scenario itself? Well, it's uh, for everyone reading the scenario, it's going to be pretty clear that this is a kind of dungeon crawl thing. I think it's also mentioned inside of the scenario that this is a kind of Passover thing for uh, people playing d d to and then the Call of Cthulhu. Is but, that actually yeah, mentioned? Uh, I think it is mentioned at some point. So, or, oh, that's cool. I didn't actually realize that. If it's not, it's just the idea has, you know, fermented inside me so, so much that <laughs> it just feels natural. So... Yeah, it's, a, it's very dungeon crawler once you get past the initial investigation in the house. Um, so, would you say the tone and the mood of the, the scenario is good or bad? Well, I like the tone. It has uh, some holes in it, you know, that uh, the GM will have to fill, whoever is running it. But, uh, I, yeah, it's appealing to me, personally. Okay. I thought it was um, it was reasonably good with the tension and threat level. Once you get, again, past that initial um, start, uh, it kind of racks it up. And it felt, have you seen a film called um, Descent at all? Oh yeah, it's. Uh, I really liked it, and uh, you know, it kind of, I guess, pushed me to go with the scenario. Oh, so, so you actually yeah. like that film too? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got that kind of vibe. It's um, you run into two minion type ghoul, like, uh, well, not 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 ghouls, are they? They're ghasts and uh, ape men. Um, so yeah, they've got that sort of like vibe next to it. Did you feel as a new GM that the wall of text you have to read through was useful or not? Uh, it is certainly useful, but uh, not in uh, a very useful manner, if that makes sense. You have, to, as you say, you have to go through various walls of text to kind of get off the information you need and to make the, the whole idea in your mind of what happened and how everything is going to go through. Uh, there isn't any timeline or any clear timeline at least provided. That kind of poses a problem to any new GM, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I put together a timeline um, before we started this and I got confused because there was quite a few dates which are conflicting and very close together and then very far apart. And it goes on about um, John Brown, who's a real historical figure in Rhode Island. And um, he has not a lot to do with the scenario itself, but mainly the, the background and the history you dig up. And there's a few other people mentioned, like Handout 1 is from... Is it Jacob Phillips to someone else? And these people, I don't know who these people are meant to be. Are they, is it just meant to get a random note or something? It's, um, it, I'd find that confusing as a new, a new GM um, coming into it with all these different uh, dates and times not laid out in a, a more useful fashion for accessing if players had information they wanted. Um, so, it, go, go on, sorry. Wait, go on. Oh, no, I just wanted to mention that uh, about the quality of one particular handout, but yeah, we're going to go. Oh, wait, are you, are you talking about the font they use for that second handout? Yeah, it's uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> really. I, my eyes were going to bleed uh, if I read that in um, one go. That was horrible. Uh, I no think idea. I presented it to you in game, like in that state. And yeah, yeah it's, that, that uh, was bad. it's not the, the, the best. I mean, we ran this with. Um, Three or four people? Was it three? Yeah, because it was Chef, wasn't it? 
Um, yeah, it was seven three. <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you feel that like three was a good number or a bad number? Do you want less or more? Well, as I started the game, I mean, I as I started keeper, should I say, I felt that three was uh, the optimum number kind of for me. I didn't want uh, too few people or too many people, and uh, you know, I had the I was anxious of how I would manage you and how pace would go. Yeah, it's. And, uh... yeah. It's a weird one because it is a dungeon crawl, uh, but it's not specifically laid out like one. So you don't know where the monsters are, and you're constantly, as a GM, deciding where where they're meant to be. Uh, you, there's two pullouts of information about the ghouls and the ape men and how they should act in the scenario, and I feel they should have been handouts to give the GM almost like take like it tells you take these out and have these to hand at all times because that's what you're going to be using for the crux of your uh, interaction with the. Uh, minions sort of thing. Would that have helped? Yes, certainly. The, as you say, there is no clear direction on how to use them. There are very walls of text that kind of say that you could do this or you could do that or, uh, you know, the guests could do something like that. But there isn't really any clear direction that would, uh, you know, give off some tip or, on how to handle the whole scenario, the whole timeline of play. Yeah, at least. yeah so I think that probably would frustrate new GMs. Um, that would frustrate me anyway. Um, so, moving on to the premise and the acts, uh, do you feel the the hooks and are believable and compelling? Does the the prem like the, the actual story hook that gets you into the investigation and sequence into the tunnels um, believable? Uh, personally, no. I don't think that as a player, I would uh, kind of you know it would excite me to go on through with it but uh, I think that's more situ situation than just sit in stone maybe yeah. some people could you know would just uh, bite and yeah th there is a, a blurb I came across about the cajoling the the players into the the hole and how if they ask for the police then you should tell them all the time is of the essence and things like these these things they're all pretty weak sauce, and uh, I had to think about it, how I'd do it. Now, if I was going to run this scenario, I would have them essentially uh, have the floor of the basement collapse into the tunnel, so they were trapped there and couldn't get out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that actually works. I've never thought about it. <laughs> so it's, it's um, yeah, I don't know. It's just when I was playing um, Whale of the Witch recently, it's like the sort of same sort of scenario came up there. Uh, you could have fallen through the graves and that sort of thing, and it was, that, that would work for this. Um, so do you feel like the, the first act is useful at all to the scenario? They go into quite a lot of detail into the slavery and uh, Rhode Island slave trade and emancipation. Um, and there's a lot of stuff the keepers are told in a fairly dry way as well, uh, that they should be relating to the, the, the players, I think, or it's just background, perhaps. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, that, I think that's a lot of window dressing for, for the GM to kind of uh, maneuver around and find what is truly information that uh, should go to the players and help them go through the scenario. Because uh, all that stuff with John Brown, it's, for example, it's... Yeah, it's it's useless. It, it doesn't kind of fit in anywhere. Yeah, it's it, it's mainly because they want to tell you that essentially. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's just a history. It, it might be true history, but it's uh, it doesn't fit in in a way at least that players can use it to. Yeah, I mean, uh, going back to something. <laughs> yeah, going back to when I was um, going through for the timeline, the the John Brown part of it seemed very redundant because you had the Westcots and you could have just replaced. The Westcots with that. It's like they tell you how they find a tunnel system in John Brown's house as well for no reason and they just ignore it after that, I think. And it's like, well, <laughs> hello, that could have been an entrance too. Cause, I mean, did anyone go in? Is it a way out? Uh, so, as a player, you could maybe be thinking, well, there's that exit too, perhaps in that house uh, to look for. Yeah, as a GM, it never occurred to me to provide an access in that house, and I don't think it is ever mentioned in the scenario that there should be no. an access in that house. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
Um, it's just rather confusing uh, the way it's set out, and uh, yeah, it's uh, more of a a wiki dump um, of like the essentially slave trade. Really, uh, it's interesting enough, I suppose, but uh, it could have been um, cut down. Yeah, I mean, someone I guess someone that someone could make a, a scenario, kind of transform the scenario to make it more interwoven, interwoven into the story. The the whole slavery improvements thing and the tunnels but at this state I don't think it uh, it serves any purpose really it's just there to you know provide historical accuracy or something yeah I, I agree so moving on to the, the second act as you explore the tunnels this is where you kind of really had to get your GM chops on and um, stop them going back the way uh, down the tunnels um, you did that with uh, essentially just by corralling us down the the pitch with the ape men and the ghast. Is that correct? Yes, I think I I don't think I quote unquote, unquote demolitioned anything behind you on your group. No, didn't you didn't, I? no, not at all. Yeah, that yeah, I, that's something I wish I would have done in your group also. Mm. And it's something that I did on other groups. After the past a certain point, uh, before getting into, I think it's uh, the Chamber of Knowledge, Chamber of History, something like that, before you enter the, the tunnels proper. Where, where the game stops you and goes, this is what's going on, this is what you need to know. <laughs> uh, it's it's a bit blunt, I think. That, that was my least favourite scene in the whole thing, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's totally out there, like, oh, hey, yeah, here are certain people, here are dinosaurs, welcome <laughs> to the yeah. cave and something, yeah. It's the Hollow Earth with Snake Man, okay. Um, yeah, it, it seemed very forced and very, like, why is this even here? Um, did they leave this here just for people coming down this tunnel? It's, it's bizarre and it doesn't make any sense. Um... <laughs> Yeah, attention wise and pace wise, it doesn't really make sense. I now that uh, I think about it, probably it makes sense after you have been being you have been chased by the ghast or you know, eight people. So you, the first impression that you get is that oh hey, that there are certain, not, not not certain people, but ghasts that you don't know what you couldn't know what they are, and uh, some kind of primates, and then you are introduced to oh hey, there's also this thing. Yeah, I mean, there's also the corpse in the tunnels at the very start as well. That is a real sort of like blunt over the head um, tool, which is saying bad things happen if you go past this point, uh, sort of thing with the, the bones and the rags in the tunnel. Um, it's the same sort of blunt force trauma with uh, details, and uh, the this scenario isn't very subtle in any sort of way. I think the the history would have been better off in the animation chamber. Um, wrapped around the walls of the, the chamber where they hung all the, the serpent eggs as a sort of history for them waking up so they can remember or something. I don't know, maybe that would have worked a bit better. Mm, yeah, either that or the Temple of Yig, that would kind of a tribute or something. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's some sort of like historical like plates um, in the temple, that would have been good as well. More like the, the sort of Egyptian sort of like hieroglyphs on the walls. So, how did you feel using the the apes and the the gas and the, the actual tunnels themselves? Did you feel like you were always like a little bit out of place, or you were able to use them effectively as a new GM, or was it very awkward? Well, uh, as I planned the the scenario out in my mind, it felt. Uh very neat to be able to maybe kidnap one of you or do something with groups of apes or a ghast coming in and out and terrorizing you but uh, yeah i found out very quickly that in game it's not so easy to do and specifically without any direction on how to do it yeah um well there it was a little bit clunky if i have to say something yeah uh, that's fair enough. I think it's a, a very hard one for new GMs to have to deal with. Um, with the, the, it's almost like herd tactics and uh, harassing players from uh, an improv point of view. Uh, I think that's quite a, a hard one to throw on GMs. But the, you do have the D&D the, the &D aspect of this, and maybe the, uh, aimed at them, they'd probably be better at that sort of thing. 
Yeah, sadly, I have no D and D background, so that didn't work for me. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> Filthy D and Ders, they're always uh, problems. <laughs> um, okay, moving swiftly on. Uh, the Act Three, the the lab, and essentially the the more fleshed out areas in the the, the actual scenario. When I get given this by you after you'd run it, um, I was surprised how little you get for each of the locations other than the lab. Uh, so, do you feel the other locations are a bit pointless? Uh, I don't I want to say pointless, but I guess its location is, other than the lab, is just a mini scene that you get maybe a five, that you should get a five or ten minute let's say, an encounter with something. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of left up to GM again. I suppose there's not a lot given to you for what should happen. I think the music room is probably the most interesting. Um, and again, that felt very D&D and like, there is this one object in this massive cavern just sitting here waiting for you. It's like, oh, okay, this is weird. Um, yeah, well, it, it, can, it can go two ways. The way I see it, it, you either just go through it and nothing happens, or the scenario ends there with uh, CXCs just coming in. And oh, right, okay. So that was a possibility of you having that that happen. Well, I had that in mind, but I, I really didn't want to do it because it felt a bit rushed. To maybe you just enter the catacombs, the yeah. the tunnels of the certain people. It didn't feel right to just end it there. Yeah, that's fair or, enough. Or, or reveal the protagonist antagonist there. Okay, fair enough. Um, so the labs, uh, how do you feel about the labs being the, oh, the final like scenario? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I I like them, but uh, there was a lack of uh, rewards, let's say, for searching in the labs. That there wasn't really anything provided. So there was no Intense. like um, tomes especially spelled out that you should get these things from this lab. Uh, is that what you mean? Yeah, something like that. Or it is described that uh, uh, Sia Hrsis has. Oh, well, I never get his name right. I just call him Hrsis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is this a snake uh, person? I couldn't have told by his name. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's. Yeah. I, I found that goofy. His name a bit goofy. I'm afraid uh, as well. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they could have gone for a more uh, pronunciable name, more easily pronunciable name. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is described that uh, he has many interesting things in his uh, lab, and uh, in the pictures provided, they also show some vats with jets and various other stuff. But you get no kind of direction or uh, instructions on what those things are or how the players would inevitably, when they look into them, what they do and how you should handle them. Okay. For, for example, uh, I think uh, both you and the other player just uh, grabbed onto scrolls and books he had and stuff. Yeah, we, we just started gutting the place, just took in all this shit. It's all ours. We won this. It's our, our booty, so we take it. Um, well, yeah, that, that's what everybody would do, I guess. <laughs> I yeah, mean, exactly. And then you go, what, what, are, <laughs> what are in these blank pages you've just gifted us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, and I just felt terrified when I, I was inevitably, I inevitably, inevitably had to provide you with something. Oh, for really? Whatever you took with you. Yeah, because I, I didn't know what to give you. I, I had to build it up from scratch, essentially. Yeah. It, it, it may have been useful for the, the scenario to say, all this is written in snake people's language and you cannot decipher it. Perhaps in time you could uh, find X, Y, and Z uh, and that would have been enough, maybe. Um, there was the the feeding of the slaves as well, if you get caught, that I noticed when I was looking through it. Um, there was the interesting idea of you being able to be experimented on by um, Hisser, or whatever his name is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that would have been terrifying and quite a good, cool scenario, um, sort of scene um, in the whole thing. I actually tried to do that with uh, the the third player that came in after our previous third player left. Okay. Uh, with Stan, if you remember, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I think it went all right because uh, he got captured. I I had to introduce him after the fact that you all of you right. have entered the 
Yeah, I remember that he came into that scenario trying to link him up to the, the sort of campaign we're playing. Um, so you actually did play that through, and that's interesting. Did he react well to it? Well, you know, it was our first interaction as GM and player. I think he enjoyed it, but okay. I don't know. <laughs> He's pretty hard to read, I'll, I'll give him that. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit hard to get feedback. Um, yeah, okay. But I think if I was going to run this or redesign the scenario, I would have the tunnels collapse to keep you in the halls. I'd have had them eventually overrun and um, taken to the lab by almost like a um, like an old Tarzan film, like you're being like taken to the the middle of the, the the den and like tied up and then experimented on. You could have the an NPC like ripped apart in front of you or something, and then taking it from there and exploring the labs, uh, the, the actual tunnels is you getting out of the tunnels rather than getting into the tunnels. How do you feel about that? Well, yeah, that would certainly work. Uh, I also had another, uh, let's say, idea on how to handle the thing that I implemented on another game that I had on this particular okay. scenario. I actually had a part of the the generates, the, the primate people, kind of uh, be willing to rebel uh, a set ah. of them that was sick, you could say, of uh, how the serpent man and the gas were treating them and was looking for a reason to. That would have made a ton of sense. Um, yeah, being slaves. Essentially, they were slaves and then they were made slaves again. Um, so I guess the generations devolve them into the beasts, but. I guess you could call them a piece of humanity there or something. Uh, it would be nice to go down that route. That would have been cool, yeah. I'd been like to see how that worked out. Oh, it, it, worked, well, it, worked, ah, too. it worked out really nice, actually. It, it ended up in a scene where all the primate people essentially, well, they they turned the certain man into paste and the, the two <laughs> nice. guests, and then they exited with the, the, three, the two survivors out of the caves and they just disappeared into the woods. While the the leader rebel primate just waved them into the into the distance while disappearing into the woods. Oh, nice. pretty nice. Yeah, that would be a nice uh, option. Uh, moving swiftly on, we're going uh, to the the finale solutions. I guess that would be a, a nice one to add. It doesn't really give you much other in the way of just escaping through the gateway. Um, do you feel like the the scenario should have given you more options? Yeah, there should be one other option, especially since there is a. Particular hand, well, not exactly hand, but there is a picture inside of the the scenario that uh, it shows the primate general people in front of a forest, a forest background that doesn't really make sense in the setting because there, there aren't really any other exits or, or anything. Right. Okay. I think it does give you quite a lot of good art though for the scenario to help you along. Oh yeah, the the, the art is awesome. I yeah, uh, they give you say that good um, maps as well of the area um yeah i think most of this the that side of things were was pretty good and um can't can't be really uh, sniffed that really um what about the npcs did you did you feel they had uh, good motives and had uh, good reason to do what they did uh well i i guess uh there are two npcs really there's just uh winscott who is your the friend of the PCs, and then there is the, the antagonist who is uh, Siachasis, the, the certain person. He doesn't get uh, that many reasons from the scenario to do what he do. You only get a, oh yeah, he woke up, he just started experimenting again, and that's his thing. They also say that he he's clever and he wants to negotiate, and but yeah, I mean that's that's a given, I guess. Yeah, in the in the suspend uh, suspended animation chamber, it does say that the the snake people are if they wake up, they'll be um, essentially dead. Um, so I was surprised why he, they'd say that and have him kicking about and why he woke up early and lived, um, or something to that effect. Anyway, so I felt there was a little bit of a, a sort of like um, conflicts of information there too. Um, I don't know. I just felt that um, everything in this scenario was these things are bad, um, these are evil, and uh, you you essentially have no other option but to fight them. Uh, so it's nice to hear about your like alternative solution as well. 
What about Winscott? Do you think he has enough um, motive being a writer to look into this? Uh, kind of. I mean, I guess it, uh, it falls again into personal taste on how the players will react to it and how they will take it. Because, uh, yeah, a person would just, you know, could just, yeah, he, he would probably want to clear his family name or keep something obscured that would just destroy his family name. So. Yeah, yeah it, it, I guess it makes sense since he isn't really all that uh, present in the scenario. He's just no. there at the start and the beginning and the end. So. Yeah, I think there were several times we had to ask his name as well. It's like, uh, yeah, we we it's, he's very disconnected from the scenario as well. I think uh, again, if you'd if it was a breakout rather than a break in, it would have been a lot better. And you had you had him with you and dragging him along. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's a bit weak sauce, I think, with uh, was was Wincott, was Scott Winscott, um, at, at the start at least, um, and why they get dragged down here. Uh, maybe perhaps it would have been better to, uh, see him get um, experimented on when you get to the labs and something like that. That would have been more terrifying. What, what, how do you feel about the horror in this scenario? Do you feel it's good enough? Ah, uh, well, uh, the. Horror is, I guess it's more like pulpy horror, out there horror. It's, eh, it's hard to define. It's more like an action horror movie kind of setting, not really a horror setting. Yeah, I, I wrote down almost goofy um, when I thought of what it was like, really. It was like very pantomime villain-esque and these classic sort of enemies on a D&D board. Getting shuffled around, um, like I said, it's like a D and D box from the eighties, almost like a, a sort of scenario, like you're playing a, like Quest or something. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad. I, I suppose it depends on the tone you you run it with. So, go on, sorry. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say that yeah, it would, would probably fit in more in a in a pulp setting with the pulp rules. Maybe that would make much more sense in it. It definitely means you could go ham with the apes uh, and really um, attack the players with them, because they've got them luck rolls to kind of like shunt, uh, like shrug off some of the the danger there, um, and get properly stuck in it. It also gives them the more heroic like feel of the the rescue, I suppose as well. So yeah, maybe that. I mean, they do mention pulp in the uh, blurbs at the start, I think as well, don't they? Oh, I never got that. Well, yeah, it, it makes sense if they do. I just mean in the general of uh, Doors to Darkness rather than this one. Um, okay, so how do you stack this against The Haunting, which is my bar for entry of a, a starter scenario for GMs? Ah, uh, yeah, The Haunting is uh, is better. I mean, it's... Uh... Do we even need to debate this? Because <laughs> it's to the test of time. So yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel that this would be forgotten in in ten years' time, or do you think it will it will still be played? That's a real hard thing to answer. That, that's probably I... a, that's probably quite a, <laughs> a, a nasty thing to say, but I mean, um, I think it might be around. I mean, this uh, book has certainly been held up as something. Um, great, and uh, I think both of us disagree with that point. I think. Well, I oh, I'm gonna start off by saying that I really like all of the scenarios, that, but uh, okay. I yeah, I'm just gonna say that they could have been more uh, thoroughly laid out. Maybe. Yeah. It's not that all of them are very nice to me. I, I really like them and. I think all of them provide at least a couple of interesting aspects that would make a, a game enjoyable. But uh, I also think that they require a lot of work from the GM's uh, point of view to, to fix. make them, yeah, to make them work. Yeah, um, yeah, I think they need a little bit more time in the oven, to be honest, uh, and a little bit more, um, well time with new GMs to figure out. The 
when it comes to, I think this runs to like 17 pages or something like that. And all of it's, like probably all of it's just walls of text um, for the most part, uh, which I think is very hard to break down and keep in your mind when you're you're running the, the session. It's not very bite-sized at all, which could have been useful. Okay. So you actually did like this scenario quite a bit then? Oh yeah, I did really like the the aspect of it and the whole idea of it, but the okay. the way it handles things and the, it provides instructions and direction to the to GM. It, yeah, it, it kind of fails there, but the the idea of it, yeah, it, I really like it. Okay, so it's just ham fisted approach to a good concept, essentially, is what you think. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Um, it's better than I thought it was. I thought it was a um, going down the D&D route, I thought this is a dungeon crawl. It's very um, simple with fairly classic bad guys and it doesn't have that horror feel. Like, you'd have to really almost uh, coach the GM on how to run this as a proper horror game, um, I think. Um, but other than that, uh, I, I did enjoy the scenario um, for what it was and it was it was a fun session. So, uh, do you have any parting comments for us, Orf, uh, about the scenario? Mm, yeah, I think I also want to mention one other thing. The, there is a severe lack of also giving out information or anything really in the Temple of Yig. It uh, should be something really built up with maybe, well, items of anything really. Something that the players could get and is used against either the guests or the certain people. Ah, right. So that would have been handy, yes. Uh, I don't think we even went there. Um, but you feel that should have been a, a, a major scene, essentially. Yeah, there, there's also provided a... There's a scene provided with it, with, uh, with uh, snakes coming out of the statue and uh, all that kind of stuff. It is a bit lackluster, but uh, I guess for new players it, uh, it, just, like, it just works. Yeah, there's a time factor as well if they want these to be one shots, I suppose. And um, if there's nothing else, I think that's us. Uh, that's our quick sort of rambling review of uh, the darkness beneath the hill. Uh, so thanks, Orf, for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Okay. And thanks for watching. Bye.